Okay, so I do a lot of screen capturing on my channel and uh, up until now I've been using the Ava Media to capture. Uh, it captures 1080 60 to an SD card, which is then very easy to put into my iPad. I don't need another device. I can basically go straight from a Raspberry Pi, Xbox or whatever, straight into this device and I don't need a PC to control it. So it's nice and neat, very, very simple to do. So at the time that was fine, but now lots of devices output 4K. So my Xbox does, this single board computer does, my Apple TV outputs in 4K, all sorts of devices are running at a much higher resolution. So it's nice to be able to capture that. But I didn't want to change and have something that had to capture to a PC because I didn't want the extra fuss. I just want to be able to plug it in, hit start and let it record. So Clone Reliance have sent me this in exchange for a review the UHD Pro. So inside the box we have a HDMI cable, a USB-A to micro cable, uh, an adapter which is 5 volt 2 amp, obviously the main unit which is much smaller than I expected, I'll compare it in a minute, uh, remote control with various different functions on it and also some quick start instructions. Here's the size comparison next to a Raspberry Pi 4 and it's about 11 and a half centimeters square and it's only about three centimeters tall. So let's have a look at the connectivity. So on the front here, we've got line in, we've got line out, and we've also got microphone input. There's a little infrared sensor here. I've got an H265 and H264 button. From the Apple website, because I know Apple use this on iPhones, HEVC offers better compression than H264, so uses less storage space on your device while maintaining the same visual quality. Snapshot and record and stop. On the side here I've got the micro USB connection which you can connect to PC. I've got a USB-A which is a storage connection. Then on the back we've got a physical power button. This is the mains input and then we've got an out and an input. So let's plug it in. So my Raspberry Pi is plugged via HDMI into the device and then out of the device and into my monitor. So if I press menu on the remote uh, here we go. Let's have a closer look at that. So it looks like a very straightforward menu. So record settings. Uh, here we can change between H.264 and H.265. We can change the bitrate between high and low. It's on low at the moment. I would have thought it would have defaulted to high. Uh, always display record on. File size 16 gig for three hours. Uh, but we can also do two gig for three hours. Uh, so obviously you're going to use a lot more compression if you use that. Time watermark and loop recording. Schedule settings, so we can set this to come on and record a device at a different time, whether that's, uh, say, something like a security camera or whether it's a live TV box, we can set it to come on and start recording. And it looks like you can do multiple recordings as well. System settings, language, playback loop, and so on. And video playback and photo playback, but I haven't got any media in there at the moment. And from the book, it tells me I can use FAT, FAT32, XFAT or NTFS. I think I'm going to go with XFAT. I think my iPad accepts that. I know my Mac does. So I've got this huge 512 gig USB stick that Orico sent me. Uh, so let's plug that in. And I need to format that. So if I go for disk, utility. So let's name that capture and erase, XFAT and erase. Okay, that's all done. Let's eject that. Now this is a USB-C stick, so I'm gonna to have to plug in a USB-C to A adapter and then plug it in the side here. See if it recognizes it. Ah, USB in it says on the screen. So if I start something on my Pi, uh, so let's go for a game. Uh, I'll do some proper game capture in a minute when I'm on a 4K device, but this is just to see if it's actually working. So let's just call something up and hit play. And if I press record on the remote control, yeah, you can see it says, I get this little overlay on the side here. I'm guessing that will disappear, yeah. So now I can uh, basically start playing the game uh, and everything's working, I would imagine. Uh, so let's stop that. Let's take a screenshot as well. So there's a little capture button. So it said saving. You can see that come up. Uh, so let's get rid of that page, pull this page over and then do another screenshot. Yeah, so now if I go into the menu, I can go into photo playback and there's two images on there. You can see I can flick through those and if I wanna go full screen, I guess I just click on it. 
Yeah, so that's the full screen image. Press back to go back to the menu. And menu and video playback. Uh, here we go, there's the video. Uh, so in a small window, it's given like a preview. And if I click on play, this will be the playback, which I'm recording still on my Ava Media, but this is the playback that's playing from the cloner box. Yeah, nice and smooth. Everything looks absolutely fine there. And let's see what happens on the box when we press record. So if I press the record button, so it's flashing on the top here, green. You can see four or five seconds. So it's flashing when it's recording. So let's stop that and press snapshot and see if anything happens on the box. Let's do that again. Yeah, it just flashes that green line. So if I change it to H264, which is this button, ah, so it changes to the uh, blue light and then if we press record, the light on the top is still flashing green. So flashing green means it's recording. This is H264, which we can also see on the screenshot. Um, and then if I pause it, I can go back to H265. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's, it's really, really simple. I haven't read any instructions really, uh, apart from formatting the USB stick. And uh, yeah, it's super simple. Okay, so let's see if this works with my iPad, which I'm using to edit this video at the moment. So if I press the display button, I can see that it's not recording. It says disk usage unknown, but it's also not flashing here. So it's not accessing the USB stick. So let's unplug that. And it says USB out, pop it in my iPad. Uh, I need to flip my case back because uh, the USB stick doesn't plug in normally. So I need to do something about that. Uh, so now if I go into the folders, yeah, you can see it's here under capture. Oh, there's still a, another partition from something else I was using it for. But if I was to click on these, so I guess the images are just still photos and they're instantly there. And then the video is, uh, well, this takes a few seconds to get into and play. There you go. So the video is playing fine. Uh, and if I was to import that, uh, so say for instance, I pick the first recording so select and let's share and save that video that will come up in my camera roll I can then go into my video and it will pop up here after a few seconds so it wasn't there initially but what it is I haven't set the date on the device and because my iPad shows videos in date order you can see it's all the way down here so I need to set the date on the uh, capture device so let's just drag that into my timeline and show that it's working fine with my iPad excellent Okay, so I've plugged my 4K Apple TV box into the cloner, and uh, if I press display without doing anything else, you'll see that it comes up as 1920 by 1080. That's because if you have anything higher than 4K 30, it will default to recording in 1920 by 1080. So what we need to do on the Apple TV box is go into settings, go under video and audio, and format, and we need to find the setting that's 4K 30, you can see 4K 60, there's loads of 4K 50s and things like that. But you go into other formats and just scroll down and eventually you'll find 4K 30, which is this one here. So let's click on that and we'll see that it will change on here. The HDMI on the left hand side is going to change to 4K. My TV recognises 4K, I can say OK on the Apple TV and you can see the cloner if I press display again, 4K 30. Now, if I press the uh, video button on here, I've done some recordings in 4K30. Uh, this is from YouTube and some various different things from streaming services and everything I tried worked. I haven't had anything refuse to record and it's been excellent. But uh, what I'll do is go back and I'm gonna do another YouTube recording. So if I call up YouTube on here, so this is 4K30 playback. And uh, if we go full screen, you'll be able to see it running. And this is the actual capture that you're watching now. So you can see how good the quality is. It does look excellent. Really, really pleased with it. Right, let's try some gaming. My Xbox Series S is 4K, but unfortunately the menus don't give me enough options to be able to make it stay at 30 FPS so I can capture it at that. So if I go into video modes and allow 24 Hertz, uh, it will go into 4K. So if I click on it now, the box detects it and we'll switch to 4K and 4K 25. So I say keep, but it drops back to 1080. 
uh, and whatever I've tried, I can't get it to stay at that higher rate. You just don't have enough settings on an Xbox. But I do a bit of 1080 capture. So if I hit record, and I'll show the capture now. I'm not sure if Forza's updated. It was showing a 15 gig update earlier on. Still a great looking game at 1080. And obviously 60 FPS looks lovely and smooth. So I managed to get a 4K desktop with Ubuntu on the Caddis Edge 2. You can see here it's running at 4K 30 and look how much space you've got on the screen. It is massive. I'm trying to get Super Touch Cart working. Uh, now it works at normal resolutions but 4K gaming obviously uh, is very unlikely to work on this. So let's go with graphics. We've got 4K option there. It does let me select it and full screen. Apply new, I've never tried this on this game. Wow, that looks pretty decent. So let's accept those settings. I have no idea this could look this good. Oh, it looks really nice. And, and the water effects and everything look pretty impressive. It's gonna be slow, wouldn't it, surely? I just, that's, to be fair, for 4K gaming on a single board computer, that's better than I thought it was gonna be. Oh, something slowed me down. Yeah, this is more an object in looking at how the graphics can look as opposed to uh, yeah, performance. But that, <laughs> that actually looks really cool. Can I look? Oh, I want to be able to look sideways on to see that moving. That looks really nice. And just to show, if I start opening some things up, just to show what we can do with this resolution, how much we can get on the screen, how many apps uh, when they come up in their normal size. And if we tap the Windows key, there you go, it shows all the apps. So I've now connected it up to my MacBook. You can see it's plugged in with a very short USB cable just to keep it nice and tidy. And I've plugged in a Raspberry Pi. This is a Raspberry Pi Zero 2W uh, with a little expansion board. And basically it's going through the HDMI cable into the cloner and then it's going via USB into the MacBook. So let's see how that looks on screen. So I can go to QuickTime. I can do File new movie recording and go down to where the capture device is and you can see here CA-989 and this is my Raspberry Pi desktop. So what I can do now is pop my Logitech keyboard on top. So basically you're using a laptop display for a device that doesn't have a display as long as you've got a capture device like this. You can use very cheap capture devices just for this simple task but you tend to find that the faster the device, uh, the less lag you get. So if we try a game, this will be somewhat playable on there. I mean, I wouldn't advise this for gaming, but it will be somewhat playable. So you can see the mouse uh, moves around reasonably well. Let's try this one. You can see it, it is a bit, it's a bit laggy from the Pi, um, but the actual input from the keyboard, the fact that I can actually play this game uh, is saying something. <laughs> <laughs> play it badly uh, but I also have the option as well uh, not just of playing it through this but I can use OBS so if I go back to my Mac and uh, well let's close down QuickTime and call up OBS you can see the uh, the picture is showing here I seem to find that you get uh, overall better quality through this so right click and full screen projector, there you go. I think this tends to be a bit faster, but yeah, the mouse, the mouse definitely feels better through OBS. So let's try that game again. Again, I'm not saying this is the ideal thing to do, but it's another, it's another use for it. Uh, obviously the capture card just works straight off in OBS. There's very, very little setup. Oh, saved it. And I can close down the Pi, I can update the Pi, I can do all sorts of things on it. Uh, all through this MacBook display. You can use the same with the Chrome, but you can same with the Windows device. I've done loads of videos on, on HDMI capture. So let's shut this down and shut down. There you go. And then I can go back into my Mac. And here's a Cados Vim for another single board computer. Uh, also plugged through the cloner and uh, you can see that it's showing up on the screen. This is a GameCube emulator and I'm using my Xbox controller with it. So I've enabled the sound uh, through OBS. You can just do it as an audio source. So we can look around. You can see what sort of lag I'm getting from my controller. 
uh, actually pretty good for, for going through a capture device and using a laptop as a monitor. Uh, I would say for some games, it's going to be playable. Obviously made that jump. Let's get into the water. Yep, impressive. And how about PSP emulation? So this is PPSSPP, still on the VIM4, uh, just showing you that it's going through the capture device and that actually the amount of lag that you get is very good. Um, it's, it's not very noticeable in a lot of things. And we can see how responsive it is. Now I don't know if I'd necessarily have noticed that it was laggy. Uh, it obviously depends, some games you get this uh, more noticeable than others. But um, that feels pretty responsive to me. Let's see if we can do this big jump here. Might be at a bit of a strange angle to do that. Oh, car. Tree. Nice. So I think overall, if I jump off the bike and do left, right, left, right, you can see that it's, it's moving around pretty well. So thanks very much to Cloner Alliance for sending this to me to test. Really impressed with it. I like the fact that it's got a remote control. I like the way that it tells you how it's recording. I wish it had uh, clearer labels for HDMI in and out. Uh, so if there was something written on here, that would be better for me. And the same with these front inputs. They're not that clearly labeled, but I guess if you leave stuff in there all the time, uh, then it doesn't really matter. Uh, obviously, you need a fast USB stick if you're gonna capture 4K. This Oroco 512 is excellent. And when you're transferring it from one device to another, you really know it's the speed. Let's have a look at some more of the specs. So worth mentioning on this, what it captures from. So 4K UHD videos or gameplay from DVR, over the air, set top box, TV sticks, disc players, camcorders, DSLRs, games consoles. The camcorders bit I think is interesting because a lot of people uh, maybe have a Firewire digital camcorder, but not a way of digitally transferring that over. Now, if you use an HDMI straight into this, you can capture that footage really, really simply in a nice usable format. Uh, I like the fact that it supports the H.265, the instant playback on a TV, and the menu system's really nice as well. Very, very straightforward. So I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.